Hello there, comrades. It is I, your Supreme Overlord, Vady Vanilla. So this is the first time I'm going to be doing a Let's Play video, which this one is going to be... Dun, 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 SD on the G Generation Cross Rays. And I'm going to just shut up real quick and give a little commentary on the little video. Hold on one second. So here we have this little reference trick on the wing. Kaboom! There's Death Sight. Ooh, and there's Heavy Arms. And there's uh, Shamrock. And there's uh, Shamrock, whatever. And then Epion! Hey, that's a good one. And uh, we're gonna go around. And nope, oh, there goes Wing Zero. Boom! So now we go over to Seed. And there's those other Seed boys. You can't stand any of them except for him. He's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, not him. No, Jesus Yamato. You get the f out of here. And here's Double O. Serby and Kyrios and oh there he is. Yes! Mr. Bushido! And of course that's it. Oh and then here's Iron Blooded Orphans, um Barbatos and um mm, mm, and there's um, it's because you're again and there's uh it's going way too fast for me to even try to keep up. Um there's Kimaris, that's my boom, Gayo Gaileo again. And this looks like a uh, mix match. Oh, there's um uh, G unit, um the blue destiny are going so too fast. But the Toggies! Toggies, look at that one. Um and there's Stargazer, okay. And um it's that side story from Double O and I don't know what that one is, uh, that one I think is the other one for you. And oh, there they all are, alright, and there we go. So I'm going to um, just show you like my team and a brief description of everyone on there, why I chose them and stuff like that. Um, I haven't picked all the scenarios yet. I I'm just really going through the ones that I like, like Double O, and um, I had to do G Unit one because of uh, I had to get Hydra from them. But uh, anyways, uh, so let's go ahead and start it up. The first thing here is the main title screen. It kind of has this boring little swoosh thing. Uh, if anyone ever played SD Gun of G Generation uh, Genesis, it showed like people in the background, like um, you know, like the, your 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 master person. Like I had Garma, and um, this one just has this, but you know, whatever. So I put an organization, and as you can see, this is my little groups here. Uh, put up four groups. All right, so here we go. Uh, obviously, da -da, it's me, kind of not really, but you know, it's the best one I can pick. And there's Hydra Gundam, uh, it's my, my favorite Gundam out of all of them, so naturally I'm going to have it. Um, and then over here is uh, the immortal Patrick Colasauer, and incredibly lucky. I just recently got the movie version of him. Um, I, I, I guess because, you know, it's just the most, the, the latest one of him. So, and, that, and it kind of fits with him being in a, um, the Brave Commander test type. So, I, it's better than a Jinx. I mean, you know, I, I like the Brave Commander better. But anyways, on to the next one. Uh, Alfredi Schultz. This, um, melee oriented pilot is from this game, the uh, G-Generation. Um, as you go over here in profiles, uh, a proud knight who remains honorable, especially during battle. She is an intelligent person who was trained in the art of sword fighting by her beloved brother. I think the brother's dead because she always kind of like uh, talks about it. Uh, her talent now rivals even his. Oh, I guess, oh, there we go. But he has fallen ill and she is now the head of the Schultz family. Okay, so maybe he's not dead. Maybe he's just sick. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, she commits herself to her duties as a knight, determined not to tarnish her family name. I love her look. Like, I love the tomboyish look with the short hair and the little knight, you know. I wish she had more expression when she fights, but uh, beggars can't be choosers. So, and then I, for now, she has got the vial. Um, I 
don't really like Undefiled. I'm just trying to level it up so I can exchange it for something a little more nighty. If you have a, any suggestions for a nighty type thing besides Kimaras, uh, just let me know in the comments and um, I'll see if I can find it. Uh, so next is uh, Brand Freeze. I love him. He is so funny. Like, you just look at here in his little two sentence biography. A highly valuable battle expert and fleet commander who has an effeminate manner of speech. He seems to favor those of the same sex and never lets his targets escape, whether or not they are enemies. This has earned him the nickname Hunter, so he's literally a butt pirate. Or like a butt hunter. He's always after the booty. <laughs> so he's just hilarious and you're gonna love the little main thing. Yeah, you, by the way, I forgot to mention, you can give your character, any characters in this game, their own background music when they fight. So you're gonna love the, the theme that I gave him. You'll, you'll see in another video. Uh, next up is Ribbons Allmark. Ribbons is another hunk from Double O. Uh, I'll just read his profile. I forgot to read Patrick's profile, but whatever. Patrick's cute. Uh, that's actually a lot of reading, so I'll just leave it up there and outside I ramble on. Um, cool thing about Ribbons is that his seiyuu, or his, uh, his voice actor in the Japanese dub, is Amuro Rei. Um, his name escapes me, so it's, feel free to yell at me for forgetting, you know, because I consider myself a Gundam connoisseur and a guru, but I don't know everything. But Ribbon's Allmark is the most conniving son of a you'll ever see in Gundam, and I love it. He is a perfect villain. And he's gorgeous. So, anyways, um, and of course I gave- Oh, I forgot to- uh, Silly. Alright. Um, Bran Freeze, I gave him Regenerate Gundam, because it kind of matches his scheme with purple. If you want to take a look at it here. There it is. Wait, hold on. Hold on, one second. There you go. So, this is Regenerate Gundam. Um, it kind of matches this whole scheme with like all being purple and kind of free and stuff. And I just like it. Like, it, it fits him, especially when it does its melee attack and with Brian Freeze's, like, quick quips, I guess you could say, or his little quotes. It just fits, so I like it. It's pretty cool. Anyways, back to Ribbons. So I gave Ribbons, of course, his Reborn's Gundam. Uh, this uh, has the, uh, it has two different forms. In fact, let me see if I can. Uh, do I do like this? Uh, no, no. Hold on. One second, still trying to get used to this. There we go. So there's his other form. Um, it's basically, it's like new Gundam and Gun Cannon had a baby together and came out with this monstrosity. Uh, it has Trans Am, an Edgar Whip, a GM Buster Rifle, GM Cannon. It is a beast and I love it, especially in the older games. It was just a monster. Like, it would never get hit because of its evasion. It was so high and it would almost always when it kills something when Trans Am is on. Once I get all the boosters and uh, modifications added onto it, then it'll be a lot better. Going on to Team 2, I have one of my OCs, uh, Leif Garson. Uh, she was from my, um, um, I, it was a story I was working on in my head. I never actually wrote it out. Um, one day I'll probably get to it, but um, I'm a little busy right now with life. Um, don't mind the weird paragraphing. Uh, for some reason the game does it like this, but uh, I'll just read it anyways. A pilot from another era in time, which is basically my way of saying the universal century. A loyal soldier to a noble family, that's the Zabis, but not born of a high status herself. Kind of a peasant. After a climactic battle, she was captured by her enemy. That was a Balaku. A Balaku. They all lost. She got captured by the Federation. With nothing to live for but revenge against the one man who killed her beloved. That's Char killing Garma. She joined her captures. She joined the Federation in an effort to find and destroy that man, which is Char as the Balaku, who at that time turned into Quattro sand in his vagina. Anyways, so I gave her the uh, Siskate. Okay, I, I'm gonna guess it's Siskate? Sis, sis, this thing. I gave her this one because it's a Titans and she kind of like joins the Titans, so I figured it works. Plus, this was a cool mobile suit that you were able to get 
uh, as a pre-order bonus uh, through Steam. So uh, it was, it's pretty cool, it, it's kind of basic, but it has like, you know, a beam saber, it has an offensive mode thing, which is fun to use. I just barely ever get to super high, uh, I have to still work on it, but it's really good for sniping though, because we look at the range on it, it's 7 blocks and you can't beat that. Uh, anyways, so uh, the next one, I have Albany Cross, who's another OC of mine. Uh, I'll read it again. Again, don't mind the paragraph. It's terribly organized, because that's just how the game does it. Uh, another pi a pilot from another era of time, that's Universal Century. At a young age, he was thrust into a large battle, that was a battle of who, where he narrowly was... He narrowly defeated his captured foe, so he's the one that defeated Leif Garson. After his foe became a recruited ally, he fell in love with her, even though her feelings were not returned. So it's that unfortunate one-sided love that Albany has for Leif. Um, not agreeing with his side's beliefs, because he's a titan, and you know, titans are pretty bad. He defects and attempts to take his comrade with him, only to be declined. I never wrote the whole thing out, but basically it's like, you know, why aren't you joining us? We should go to the AU, and then Blake is like, no, I don't want to do that. I want to kill Shar. So, he would eventually go on to face his best friend, and of course it's cut off right here because there's a limited amount of uh, letters or words you can put into these paragraphs. So, I'm still looking for a mobile suit for him. I'm just leveling up Legend Gundam until I can exchange it for something better. So, for now, that's just all it is. Uh, next up is uh, Kennard Pars. I love this guy. He is just, he's a cute, he's a cutie. I mean, you can't deny that. But on top of that, too much reading, so I'll just cut to the nitty gritty. Everyone that's familiar with Seed knows about Kira Jesus Yamato. Well, he is like a, essentially like a failed version of him, and he holds that to heart. And he is like split personality. Like one second he's like acting all like heroic, and then other times he just acts like a complete dick. So it's it's great. Like I, I really like that in a character, and he's a lot more tolerable than Kira. Well, I can't stand him. Uh, see right there, his character really failed super coordinator. Um, for his defense reaction, and the way he goes up by 20, and increased by 30% to that, and that, 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 you can read. So, yeah, it just says right there, he's just a failed experiment. Oh, wow, that sounds so familiar, doesn't it? Anyways, so, his Gundam is Dreadnought Age. I'm gonna keep that as that, because that's canonically his Gundam. It's, it looks basic, but it's pretty cool with this. I haven't gotten to see what Barrage looks like, but uh, Armor and Lumeri Handy is really cool. Beam Saber, the Beam Sword is cool, and I like his little submachine gun he pulls out, so it's a cool thing. I, I really think this mobile suit. Um, of course, you see man, Mr. Bushido. Uh, Mr. Bushido is from Gundam Double O. Uh, he is a Grand Anchor, spoiler alert. And he ends up, basically he's this white guy from the Union, so he's like American. He gets beat so hard, he turns into a weeb, a super weeb. He has a Bushido mask and a kimono type outfit for his Alon suit. Um, I gave him Gundam Killer because, you know, he's after, you know, Setsuna and his Gundam Double O. So, and, and the other game, he also already innately had Gundam Killer, so I figured I'd just give that back to him. And of course, I'm gonna give him Susano. Uh, this thing is the weeb of weeb mobile suits next to like Busha Gundam and stuff like that. Yeah, it has two swords. Uh, it has Trans Am as the Beam Chakra and it has the Tri Punisher and the uh, Pointless GM Vulcan. So it's really, really cool. I love the design of it. I'm gonna take a look at it. If you, if that, you know I said two swords, right? Because that one's a sword, and that one's a sword. He puts it together. But it is a cool, cool mobile suit. I wish I could have the model for it, but again, I never have time for models anymore. So it will probably just sit in its box. Um, oh, my warship. Oh, okay, so I got the uh, Grand Chario, I think it is. 
See, I say Grand Chariot, but then I see Grand Chariot, so I'm not sure exactly which one it is. So again, comment below, let me know, yell at me, and uh, we'll figure it out. I like it because it looks like a Star Destroyer, and I love Star Wars, so um, I really like the whole look of it, and it's huge. I, I like big warships, so I just wanted that to be my main one. The only thing I hate is that it only works in space. It doesn't work on Earth level maps, so I have to switch out constantly. But maybe there's a part down the line that'll help me at least put it, use it in the atmosphere. Probably not, but whatever. I have a f Star Destroyer. Uh, of course, my captain is, um, my, my, my captain is Kati. Anakin from uh, the double the double up movie. I like her because she partnered up with Patrick, and they're like totally different personalities. You know, Patrick's this fun, happy-go-lucky idiot, and Kati is this very serious, very glum woman who takes everything seriously. But they balance each other out so perfectly. So I just made her my captain. And the rest of these, I really don't know who they are, uh, nor have I bothered to care. In fact, here, let, let's take a look at Nikki Taylor. First time reading this, no idea. Um, cool and calm and cool when it comes to balances, and she has all the qualities of a good aid. Okay. Although she has the skills, she lacks experience in actual combat, and her cautious nature can sometimes hinder her in the face of unexpected events. With more experience, she definitely has a Ability. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, kind of cute. Um, what does she sound like? Pretty basic, but you know, still nice. She has a nice face. Not that bad. So, yeah. Anyway, so next is La Mila Luna. Or is it Spanish? It's La Mia. La Mia Luna? I, I don't know. Um, okay, so here we go. Again, yeah, first time reading this. Forgive me. Initially contracted as an operator, she somehow ended up piloting a mobile suit and was sent out to battle. Oh. This unlucky woman cried day and night as she fought in a mobile suit battles until it eventually became her way of relieving stress. As an operator, she no longer has opportunities to work as a pilot. Losing this out with her stress relief has made her more restless lately. I should totally see what she's like in a mobile suit. Uh, how does she sound? Let's see. Well, she sounds very spunky. That's not too bad. Okay, yeah. Okay, that was pretty suggestive. Let's get out of here. Uh, one of these days, I want to see what she does in a mobile suit, but gosh, her stats are awful. What do I even use her for? Oh, that's right, because she's mainly over here. Okay, so next up is Rasel Mizuka. Um, wait. Where? Does she even have tits, or is that just the cardboard under her shirt? Uh, what is that? Her? His? Um, well, it's definitely not a Vanny, because I'm the only Vanny, so don't even try that. Oh, it says she. Okay, so, well, first time reading, let's do it. Loved by everyone on the team, this bright, forward-thinking hard worker enjoys an almost mascot-like status. However, she wants to be taken more seriously and tries her best to be useful, even if she doesn't, even if she's not very skilled. So she basically sucks. Okay, great. Why do I have her? Her presence on the front line makes people nervous, and she ends up being overprotective by her comrades. That's sweet. She's also known to talk like a boy from time to time. Okay. All right. What does she sound like? Yeah, I could definitely see the talk like a boy part. Sounds just like Catra. Alright, let's see. I guess I keep her because of this, but um, always room to get rid of some people. Uh, next up is Sadani Almaz. This guy, she didn't look any dude, but blonde hair. Um, the mechanic. 
Oh god, your stats are pitiful too. Why do I have you? Um, okay, whatever. First time reading it, here we go. A hardcore mechanic, well, hardcore. A hardcore mechanic, his reason for being on the battlefield is so that he can tweak and modify the latest and rarest mecha to his heart's content. That's actually pretty cute. Although his skills are substantial, he is quite lazy at heart and has no interest in anything other than mechanics. He has a tendency to prioritize machines over people, getting, ex uh, getting excited only when he sees interesting mecha. He is often looking for an opportunity to make off with rare components even in the midst of battle. So he has a hard on for mechas. Let's hope that somewhere down the line we don't see Noble Gundam because he might just smash. <laughs> Anyways, oh, well, let's hear what he sounds like. That's exactly what I figured he'd sound like. Oh, alright, let's see. And the last one, Florence Kirishima. Oh, goodness, I cannot read today. Uh, Florence Kirishima. Oh no, I acted it out. <laughs> okay, so let's go to her profile. She tries to act as a lady of nobility, but actually has a violent temper. She uses overly pop overly polite language and an overbearing personality to get what she wants out of life. So a spoiled brat, okay. Stay on her good side and she is a great ally, but get on her bad side and her true persona will be unleashed like a wild beast out of control. Oh my. Recently, she has had opportunities to be genuine ladies of nobility, however, she has become even less tolerant of those who might call her a phony, attacking them without exception. So she's a <laughs> uh, What does she sound like? Wow, she's crazy. Okay. And her stats are. Uh, I mean, I'm keeping her there under the guest because guest charisma I think does something. I think it's experience gain. But um, you know, she might not be a bad pilot though. One of these days, I'll give her a whirl too. All right. So that takes care of group one. I'm just gonna go over to group two which is my other main fighting force, and then we'll see what happens next. Here they are! Alright, so this is my second group, which I call the Outer Earth Orbit Regulatory Joint Fleet. That's exactly what Carta Issue always calls it. We'll get to her in a second. Uh, so I have from the DLC, Loran Sehak. Love, 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 love Loran. Not only is he cute, but he is just a sweetheart all around. Um, if you don't know anything about him, I beg you, watch Turn A Gundam. Turn A Gundam, you will not be disappointed. Great, great, great anime. And I'm actually happy that a lot of the Turn A folks are uh, in this one, because it's it, it's really good. Like, the mobile suit designs are unique, which, speaking of mobile suits, that, let's go, let's go right to it. Here it is, Turn A Gundam. Mustache and everything. Loved. I, it's, I, I can't express how much I love Turning. Like it, it's really, really like when I first saw it, I was like, "What is this? There's no way this is a good, good, good Gundam series." But then it just grabs you in and it doesn't let go. So it's really good. Definitely give it a shot. Uh, next up, another OC of mine. In fact, there's like three OCs in this team because um, I haven't gotten to all the characters I want, so these are just mainly placeholders. So this one is uh, Valiant Mikado. Uh, he's, he's he's actually from one of my stories that I, um, I've been like, off and on working on for years. I got the first season done, he comes in in the second season, which is almost done, but I just haven't gotten around to finishing it. Uh, anyways, uh, Valiant Mikado, uh, he is a pilot from another era in time. Uh, instead of Universal Century, this is from the Universal Era. Um, he is third in line to the crown of Orion, that's the Orion Empire in the story. Calculating and vicious, he will stop at, he will stop at nothing to obtain absolute power over not only his empire, but the colonies and Earth. He is like, 
super dictator. Super, like, dictator, king, emperor, god emperor, whatever you want to think of, so that's him. That is definitely him. And as for himself, he believes all of humanity shall become espers, and he will rule over them. Not gonna give out any spoilers because I do plan on releasing the kind of story fairly soon on my Wattpad. But um, yeah, that that's him. Uh, not really how he looks, but it's the closest thing I could find. Uh, I don't have any special themes for him yet, but um, we'll see. Uh, next up is Vidar. I love 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 Vidar. He is from Iron Blooded Orphans. The only good thing that I. I'm oh, sorry. Not the only good thing. I, I rephrase. The only character I like in Iron Blooded Orphans is Galio, aka Vidar. Another spoiler alert. Sorry, I should really say these spoiler alerts beforehand. Um, maybe I'll just put something in the beginning and say it. Uh, anyways, you can read that while I blabber about him. So, Vidar, aka uh, Galio. Uh, Galio is basically like the Garma of Iron Blood and Orphans. He is a friend who just happens to be blood, just like Shar was, and the Shar Garma over, just like how McGillis, worst name ever, over uh, Gileo. Uh, but the difference is Gileo never dies. Gileo turns into Vidar, which is like a Darth Vader and then look, watch, watch, ready? Watch, see him right here? Come, boom! He is like buff. Okay, you're short pants, but whatever. Vidar, love him. Great, great character. And uh, his his mobile suit, of course, we're gonna keep it canon with him, is the Kimaris Vidar, the Gundam Kimaris Vidar. Love this one too. It's got the whole knight look. It's got you know, this lance, it has a sword, it has little drills in its knees. It just looks amazing. Like, it is just the coolest Gundam in all of IBO. Even that side story that, come, that comes after IBO, this thing just beats the pants out of all of them. Like, it's just so, so amazing. Love it. It's great. So, next up is uh, Chibi Long. Uh, these, the next two are going to be OCs, just, just the FYI. Uh, Chibi Long is uh, from my Gundam story as well. Um, a pilot from another era of time, that's the Universal Era. An orphan during the Orion Empire's attack on Narin, that's Narin Kyrgyzstan, I think? I don't really know how to say the country, I just looked at it and was like, hey, let's do that. Her Esper potential broke the charts. Uh, no spoilers, but um, Esper is like a new type. So, just, you know, every series has that little thing. Prince Valiant, that's Valiant Macabre you saw earlier took her along with her uh, friend Dorian as his personal wingman. Brainwashed into servitude to the Empire, she still holds strong feelings for Dorian. So Dorian and Chibi are like best friends. Um, a little insight on me, uh, I used to have a cat uh, named uh, Dorian and Chibi, so I just immortalized them in my story. Um, Chibi passed away uh, a long time ago. I only had her for a year. Uh, I feel like leukemia is a so so fortunate. Uh, as for Dorian, um, well, my ex took the cat, so whatever. Uh, anyways, so the next, next OC, uh, Dorian Mao, that, that's his name, yes, Mao, um, uh, a pilot for another era of time, an orphan from the Rinkerigis is yeah, that place. His town was attacked by the Orion Empire, where a number of civilians were either captured or killed in the name of gathering potential espers. He was captured by the Empire and made into a child soldier along with his friend Chibi Long. Unlike Chibi, Dorian is not an esper. So it goes to question if they were finding who was going to be an esper, how did Dorian manage to not get killed by the Empire? You'll just have to find out whenever I uh, decide to release that story on my Wattpad. Um, okay, so, then to the warship. By the way, the, these are all blank because this warship only has uh, room for one team. Eventually, I'll get the add-on for it so I can add another team here. Though, I don't know what pilots I'm going to use since there's not a lot of pilots I want to keep on my team. So, we'll see. Anyways, this is the supersonic transporter. 
let's take a look at it. And this one is from um, Gundam Wing. It's from Gundam Wing. Uh, it's little. It's this little like zippy blue space flyer that just goes zoom, and it has the it has a little turret beam cannons up here on the top, and then it has like little anti-aircraft guns. I like it though because it's just it's small, compact, and it does the job. And for when I was first starting to play the game, it's very cheap. And on top of everything else, this part is the most important. You can use it on both space and atmospheric maps. So I don't have to switch this one out. This is the only annoying part. Like I said, I just need to get another part here to expand the hangar. Uh, and then my captain is a Karta issue. Originally, I had Karta as the master for this unit. But she works out a lot better as a warship captain. So like, like this right here, firm and absolute. The final damage that she does when she does the uh, link up or the warship link ups, it, it it really boosts it. Like it's it's crazy how much damage she does. So she works a lot better as a commander. And then on top of that, I boost up her range because. Yeah, she's, I wanted to make her into a badass, because she died way too early in that series. She's like my second favorite in that whole series, but of course, my luck, everyone that I like dies, so that's that. Um, let's see, does she have any special See, I don't understand this part. So, like, they show her in her, um, in her normal suit, but she doesn't really use it. Like, when she's in a mobile suit, she's not, like, in a special stance or anything like that or wearing that. She's just wearing her regular outfit, just doing this stance. No other additional animation. So, it was kind of weird just seeing her just stand there like a stiff board while she's in a mobile suit. So, I just put her in as a captain because it makes more sense. And she's better as that. Anyway, so the rest of them are just randoms from the G Generation games. Let's go ahead and just dump right into them. Then, then uh, the Nebola Shaheen. That's an interesting name. Let's see what he has. A veteran officer who always keeps a cool head while in action. He has exceptional fighting. He has exceptional fighting skills and is able to instruct comrades gently but firmly. He is a valuable asset but prefers to stay in the background, serving as a loyal and reliable aid to the commander. So he's basically the perfect EXO. Uh, what does he sound like? Let's find out. Okay. Him and his Brock guys are dull and boring, but you know, I mean, he doesn't have too bad of stats, but then again, I have leveled him up a bit. He wouldn't be too bad as a pilot either, so... Another one that I could uh, hold on to there. Uh, next up is Juzo Ohara. Uh, let's see what he's got. God, that hair is... Wow, he can spike so right for his money, hmm? Terrible outfit, too. Uh, so, he's a communication specialist with expert operating skills. This man is trusted by his comrades for his ability to accurately assess the situation on the ground. However, his bubbly and happy personality makes him quite the chatterbox during battle, and recently people have been cutting his communication short. Not realizing this, he gets very upset very every time he thinks people are ignoring him. Oh, he just has issues. Uh, what does he sound like? Let's see. Why does he remind me of Joseph Joestar? <laughs> Oh god, now everyone's gonna be like, is that a JoJo reference? Okay. Um, anyway, so next up, uh, Ernst Jaeger. Uh, scruffy, veteran looking guy. Uh, oh, look right there, a seasoned veteran with a great deal of combat experience. This allows him to provide skillful support to younger members, and he has gar garnered their trust. You could have just said earn their trust, I mean. Whatever. Though he may be cynical, he has the ability to make quick decisions and complete missions effectively. Alright, it's pretty basic. I mean, not gonna wow me that much. What do you sound like? Yeah, I'm not gonna wow me that much. What do you sound like? 
while he detests the act of war itself, this youth, with a strong sense of justice, chooses to fight to put an end to this senseless bloodshed. Oh, it's like the worst trope for Gundam characters. With a gifted sense of hand-to-hand -hand combat. What? It is said there is no one who can match his skills in close quarters combat. Hey, Junus, I would like to introduce you to Mr. Bushido. You kick your ass. He can supposedly hear the voice of the universe and has gone missing after following this voice in the past. Alright. So another crazy one. What do you sound like? I don't want to kill you now. Why do you hear the voice of the universe? Oh, he's so whiny. Okay. Uh, going on to the last one here is uh, Sis Mitville. Um, this little lolly thing here. A reserved girl who detests fighting. Oh my gosh, another one. Who detests fighting but has no other choice. Though she hates herself for it, she reluctantly, uh, she reluctantly engages in battle. She is a rather poor communicator and therefore values the undivided attention and friendship of Kachua Reese, although she lacks the words to express the sentiment. I'm going to be honest, I don't know who that is. I have never used them, but whatever. Let's hear how she sounds. <laughs> Okay. So it's like a lolly Ray Ayanami or whatever it is. Whatever. She's a placeholder too. Um, I have her as a guest, but her charm is pretty lacking. I might switch her around eventually. Uh, so that's it for my second group. Those are the, the first group and the second group are mainly the only ones that I use for fights and battles. Uh, the other ones I just sent out in dispatches, which I'll discuss in a bit. Um, oops, wrong button again, excuse me, ha <laughs> alright. Uh, so this is the ones I use for dispatches. I just mainly use them to level up. Um, global suits that I don't feel like playing or just want to not bother with. Just so I can, you know, get completion, because I'm at like 69%, but whatever. Um, you see, uh, Psycho Haro. <laughs> we'll get into that one later. Um, uh, Lago, 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 um, that little weird fox, wolf, desert thing, and seed. Uh, a Dark Dagger L, uh, Gundam Stray Red Frame, one of many. Uh, a Taurus, um, and the AU Helion Space Terrorist, which, hey, let's see if it's anything worth exchanging. No, it is not. Alright. Um, and then the last one is the Dreadnought Gundam, piloted by Ein. Cutie, unfortunate soul from IBO. Uh, the rest of these pilots are just ones from uh, G Generation. Uh, I already went through the other ones, so we might as well just go through these two real quick. Uh, Mark Gilder looks like a Dracula vampire thing with that outfit. It's weird looking. Uh, an ace pilot who can adapt to any situation with his calm and collective manner. His strong leadership skills have helped him lead his comrades to victory on many occasions, truly earning his ace title. Okay, so he's just like the ace, and that's it. He's just an ace. What do you sound like? Okay. That's about as much as I would expect him to sound like. Uh, moving on, uh, Sheld Forley. A little Shota boy. Despite his frail appearance, he is an incredibly active and strong-hearted young man who does not easily give in to adversity. Although his combat skills may be lacking at the moment, 
is high at the ad adaptability. Come on, Manny, get together. Should trigger his hidden strengths over time. These may be just the powers he needs to succeed in helping those he cares about. I don't care. It's whatever. I. Oh, you can see why you can see why he is just put into the dispatch group. Because it does not interest me one bit. Plus his stats aren't that great. Uh this next one is just named Blood. He looks like a rapist. Um I'm proud of you know what I think about it, his his outfit looks very Federation like, so Creepy. A proud and dangerous man who considers anyone other than himself to be a lesser being. Ooh, big. We got a badass over here. With excellent fighting skills and a plethora of experience and achievements obtained through fierce battles, he is an integral part of the team, despite his trouble getting along with others. He would never shoot a comrade, so perhaps he doesn't have some warp so perhaps he does have some warped sense of morality. Does this face scream morality? I don't know about that. Let's see what he sounds like. He just sounds crazy. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what else. He just sounds like a nut job. Alright, the um, next uh, Ranaliu Shade. Might be butchering that name too. Kind of a cutie. He looks like a rock star. He looks like a drummer. Uh, got a choker there. Wonder what that's for. Uh, a proud mercenary. He is confident in his piloting abilities. He takes pride in his work and has the skills to match. He has unwavering confidence in his abilities and is always on the lookout for someone stronger than himself. Sounds like a good guy. What do you sound like? Tada de sumu to omou na yo. Like I said, sounds like a rock star. So, not too bad. Uh, his skills are pretty good. Um, his stats are range, melee, and defensive. So they're pretty solid. Maybe I'll use them eventually in the future. Who knows? Uh, next up, uh, Abram and Ramza. Again, probably butchering his name. Whatever. Don't care. A battle-worn hero with many glittering achievements under his belt, he is also a hard worker who obeys the rules. He uses his experience to teach and support, while also standing on the front line of battle. He is proud of his home country, and is prepared to die for it. His middle initial M stands for Mitchell. Abraham Mitchell Ramza. What country do you think he's from? Comment below. Maybe we'll solve the mystery here. I'm gonna go with something in the Middle East. Anyways, let's hear how he sounds. Oh my. You know, it doesn't sound too bad. I like his voice. Uh, his stats, on the other hand... Mm. He's a good auxiliary. I might switch him up and put him as a uh, XO on one of the other teams eventually. So not too bad, not too bad. Um, next one, uh, Elise Claude. She looks familiar, like I've seen her in some fan art on uh, Dambodo and stuff like that. Uh, her stats are decent, uh, she has a pretty good reaction. So she, she's zippy, she'll be able to evade shots. Uh, what does she got? A pilot who fights with a keen sense and strong will. She is serious, kind, and has no love of fire. Oh, goodness. But that does not mean she lacks the willpower and determination to pull through long and difficult battles. To end the war, she overcame her hesitancy and plunged into the fight. Perhaps someday Lady Luck will be on her side. Let me introduce you to Patrick Colasauer, the man that gets shot down every single time and lives to tell the tale. Lady Luck is always on his side. So how do you sound? Okay, so not, not too bad. It's kind of basic, but you know, whatever. Uh, pretty cool normal suit. Uh, her character seems looks alright. It just doesn't really like 
spark out at me as someone I really want to use. So, to the dispatch group with you. Uh, and last but not least, of course, I am definitely a cutie, unfortunate soul. Spoiler alert! There we go. See, I did it right this time. Spoiler alert! Um, he gets completely f***ed and ends up just merging in with the, the Grey's Eye, which we'll get into later, but um, you, you just watch IBO. It's hard to explain but in such a short amount of time. Just watch IBO. You'll get it, I promise. Uh, last group, I promise, is uh, group number four. As you can see, it's very bland and blank because I don't really have any slots to fill right now. Plus, I use this occasionally as my own raid group, which um, is all of the guys in masks. That's why everyone in here has a mask. I call them the... Oh gosh, what did I call them? Hold on one second. Uh, da, 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 da. They're the common type, which uh, translates to um, mask squad or mask team. So, um, I have a silver crown, which in some translations I've seen silver clown, so I'm not sure if which one is right, but um, he is from uh, G-Unit, and uh, he is, see, spoiler alert, he is actually Odell Barnett in disguise. I really like his suit because you know, he looks like a Xeon officer with his own, he looks like a Xeon officer with his uh, mask here, and uh, his voice is actually pretty cool here, let's just take a look, let's just take a listen. So yeah, see, so it's something I like. Um, another, another, any anyone with a mask is always gets an A plus in my book. So uh, next up, Sex Marquis. Oh, my love hate relationship with this man. Um, oh wait, before we go to Sex, uh, the mobile suit I use for uh, Silver Crown is the Brunlapius. This weird monster right here. Um, it's just a placeholder again because I don't really like it that much. Even though I can't exchange it for anything good. So it's just to keep leveling up and leveling up until I actually do it. Uh, anyways, alright. So Zex Marquis, my love-hate relationship with this man. Uh, he is the Char clone, if, if you want to call him. Uh, the Char clone of the Gundam Wing series. And I, I like him here. This is the Zex I like. I cannot stand Zex when he turns into Miliardo, because I just hate Miliardo with a passion. And when we get into the Gundam Wing part of the of the game, I'll dive deeper into my hate for Miliardo. But uh, I really like Zex because he's got like a little Char get up with the red outfit. And um, he has a cool mask, and he has the like, long, flowing silver hair. So he's like the Sephiroth of Gundam. Uh, I gave him the uh, Epion uh, Endless Waltz Edition, which, just look at this thing, like, <laughs> it's really cool. I really like the Epion. It, it's a, it, granted, it's flawed, and we can get into the flaws later, and we can argue about it if you want, As I still say my beloved Gion can take out the Epion, but that's totally different. Anyways, so the Epion, demon looking cool with the whip and its sword. I like it. I really like it. So it, it's a cool, it's a cool design. I, I'll give it that. Just like a lot of things in Gundam Wing. There, there's a lot of things in Gundam Wing are cool design. It's just the story and the characters that irk me to no end. But that's for another time. Uh, last but not least, last character we're going to talk about. The good boy, Harry Ord. Now, as you can see, he's funky looking, right? Where is he from? Turning Gundam, where everything is funky looking. Um, he's got these bug eye shades, and don't ask me how they stay on there. I don't know. Um, there, as you can see, there's nothing here. Maybe, maybe it's some clips in the hair. I, I don't know. Uh, anyways, uh, Harry. He's cute. He's cute. He's got good stats. He pilots a really cool mobile suit, which is the uh, Sumo. Look at him. 
Anyways, so that's the um, the gold sumo. He has a gold one, and the uh, the other ones are silver. Um, I believe there's no other color variants, but I could be wrong. He's known for just shouting universe just every, every time. Like you know, that's like his trope. That's Loran does it too. But um, no, I really like Harry. Harry is really good. Um, I just realized what this. What is this? Let's see. Oh, I just need to get him to level 30, and he's really going to get even better. So, I'm going to really work on him. Definitely going to work on him. Maybe put him as a as a squad leader or something of some sort. But, um, okay, so that is all of my team there. Uh, that's pretty much it for now, as far as for an introduction for Crossways. Oh, briefly, real quick, I just wanted to talk about uh, a new a, a new thing for this series, uh, G Generation. It's this is uh, this is cool thing called Group Dispatch. Now, granted, I wish it was like different levels that you could play, like little quick levels, because that because you know you, going through the story is great, but it's tedious at times. Where as if we if we if these were all levels, it would be really fun. But at the same time, it's very helpful because, you know, you can't play 24-7. Who oh, has that type of life? So before you turn off the game for the night, you can just send out your team to do a little mission. And you see the dispatch time, and then the times here, that's how long it takes. So let's say you're going to go to bed, like it's close to bedtime. You go over here to this one. It's eight hours. Put your dispatch in there. Hope for the best. Let's see, 45% success rate, like, okay, whatever. I don't know how to make it better or not. The point is, you send them out, you get free experience, you get free stuff, like sometimes a mobile suit, skills, even more little tickets that are, that use to, to skip some of your time. But, um, it's, it's a pretty cool addition there. So, like, I can now level up my mobile suits without needing to, to sit there and grind all the time, which I do like grinding, but... It can be tedious at times. Um, other than that, uh, that's pretty much it. The next time we have a video, I'm going to go into the story mode. I'll put in a poll on my Instagram of which ones you want me to do or if you want to see. Um, real quick, we'll just go to the different ones. I just recently finished this one, so that's why it's up there. So there's Gundam Wing. I hate Gundam Wing. Well, love hate. Love hate. I like, hate a strong word, so let's do love hate. Uh, next one after that is uh, G Unit, which I like that one. It's it's pretty fun. Uh, Endless Waltz. Ugh, not gonna say anything. Um, if you want me to play it, it's fine. Uh, Seed. Um, hate it, but it's there. It's there. Uh, Seed is strength. I know nothing of it because I hated Seed. But um, we'll leave it there, but that's fine. Seed X Astray, you're seeing the, the trend with Seed. Uh, seed Destiny. <sighs> then there's Seed Stargazer. I don't know anything about it either. I haven't even played that one either. So, in fact, if you haven't noticed, I haven't played any of the Seed ones. So, there, there's my opinion on Seed. Double O, I like Double O, for the most part. Uh, this is a side story for Double O. It takes place in between both Season 1 and Season 2. The movie. Hmm. Just, uh, okay, Aliens. Uh, Iron Blood and Orphans, really good series. Love it, love it, love it. Really good. And then there is the story after IBO. I believe it's afterwards. I could be wrong. But, uh, know nothing about it. So, that could be interesting as well. So, that'll do it. Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate you going through this train wreck of a video as I try to get a little more better with presenting myself on these. Like I said, I've never done these before, so, um, to, to, to let you all go, I'll just leave you with this uh, brief condom clip. I, I hope you enjoy it. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.
オーバーフラックスフォーメーション E でミッション開始する隊長ジョシュアか<笑>ジョシュアフォーメーション崩すな<笑>隊長ずらして空中変形いつまでも自分だけのものと思って<笑>な何